Welcome back, I'm Ross from Britain's Hidden History and I'm reading from Arthur the King of the Morgan and Gwent by Wilson and Blackett and talking about sources we get our history from so this is to talk uh, briefly about the Welsh Annals or the Annals Cambria as they're <laughs> surrounded by these little birds here the earliest copies of these ancient annals is held in manuscript A of the Harleian collection in the British Museum in London. This is a master copy believed to resemble exactly the original version of these annals and it is written on parchment set out in three columns per page. The Welsh annals begin with the date 444 AD and the entries then continue up to 954 AD. Then follows a 27 year gap and an entry ending the annals in 977. These existing copies are made from earlier versions as the old document faded over the centuries and was made around the end of the 12th century, 200 years after 977 AD. Manuscript of copy B is held in a public record office on some extra fly leaves of the Tombsday Book. This document is believed to derive its early entries from the Isidore or Seville Origens, but it begins with the creation of man. It is believed to be unreliable chronologically up to 444 AD, but from then on it agrees fairly closely with manuscript A, apart from losing seven years in 954 AD. The form of the Welsh annals closely resembles that of a modern diary. The small spaces allotted to each year, and each of these spaces is titled annus or year. The spaces or years are grouped into tens, each tenth year being numbered off severally. This allows for easy calculation from 444 AD, just as with a diary. A brief sentence is used to summarise or describe the major events of the year, all of course written in Latin. Many years have no uh, entry recorded, and this may be because the entries concentrate on the deaths of kings and bishops and on the dates of important battles. The first 50 years from 444 to 496 have in fact a mere six entries and then the next 50 uh, on to 544 there are only a further five entries. 11 entries in 100 years indicates fairly conclusively that the entries were in fact made sometime around or after 550 AD and the chronicle was piecing together only the known major identifiable historical events. The date 44 for a starting point of the annals points clearly to one of two possible events. Either it marks the restoration of order and the election of Vortimer, the son of Vortigern, to be the British leader after the revolt of the Saxons around 442 to 444 AD, or it marks the date of the re-establishment or foundation of religious communities such as the Abbey. It may in fact be the date that the British reorganised themselves to beat off the savages and again be finally free of the burdens and thoughts of Rome. However, manuscript B does in fact go on past 954 and continues into the early part of the 13th century, gathering further detail and accuracy as it proceeds. The third 50-year period from 544 to 594 AD has a total of 12 entries of events a sign of gathering momentum and detail. Gildas at the preface of his work explains that there were no British documents available to him. All that survived being taken to France or Amorica. Manuscript B opens with two entries of remarkable accuracy which are capable of exact correlation and checking. The fourth year, 448 AD, has the entry Dies Tenespora Sicus Nox, meaning a day as shadowed as the night. Astronomers have calculated that an eclipse of the Sun was visible in Britain on the 23rd of December 447 AD and the fact that the entry is 448, not 447, lies with the fact that the new year was considered to start on a day other than the 1st of January. The exact entry in manuscript B is 453 AD which also records that Easter was changed to Sunday with the advice of Pope Leo of Rome. Now, this is accurate, but the dispute between the Western churches and Rome over the date of Easter did arise in 453, with the Eastern Church in Constantinople. The problem was whether Easter 455 should fall on the 17th 
or the 24th of April. As far as Britain was concerned, Easter was changed to a Sunday. The Rome had celebrated the festival on a Sunday for over 200 years. Other checks on accuracy, accuracy are possible. With dates such as that of 547 AD, where it is stated that the great mortality in which died Malkin, king of Gwenedutta. In fact, a terrible plague did spread out of Western Asia to ravage Southeast Europe throughout 543 and 544 AD. This Malkin is, of course, Malgun of Gwynedd, who is believed to have died in 547, or possibly at the tail end of the Great Plague in 551 AD. Gildas, of course, wrote of Maglaconus, the king, the dragon of the island. And Gildas himself is mentioned no less than twice in the annals. In 565 AD, there is the journey of Gildas to Ireland. And in 578 AD, simply, Gildas died. This clearly demonstrates that Gildas was indeed regarded by the writers as a person of very considerable importance. One manuscript describes Gildas as Briton, Brit, sorry, Britonum sapientissimus, which means wisest of the Britons. The other as sapiens, the wise. There are entries concerning Arthur, our ultimate hero and quest. The first occurs in 516 AD, where the entry states the Battle of Baden, in which Arthur carried the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ for three days and three nights on his shoulders, and the Britons were the victors. The second entry is in 5837 AD, and this states Battle of Camlan, Arthur and Medro died, and there was a plague in Britain and Ireland. Very important quote. <laughs> so Arthur, a Christian king, is victorious at Baden and possibly killed at Camlan. Two different words are written for the word battle. In 516 there is bellum, which is a battle in Latin. And in 537 there is a gwith, which is the British word, from which we derive the modern Welsh cad, which is battle. All this suggests that the entries were in fact of early date, being made by contemporary contemporary different authors or writers. The B manuscript has a fuller account of the events for it states, quotes, Battle of Camlan, in which the famous Arthur, King of the Britons, a Mordred, his betrayer, died of wounds they inflicted on each other. This is an interpretation of an earlier cryptic entry, and probably wrong, for Arthur probably lived many years after Camlan. Arthur was not the last champion of Roman Britain. That state or province died in 410 AD or earlier. Arthur was king of the Britons, neither friend nor dependent of Rome, a leader of the British state and the British way of life. The entry in the B manuscript was, however, copied after the Norman conquest of England and Wales, and at the time of the bogus discovery of the grave purported to be that of Arthur by the mendacious monks of Glastonbury. All manner of interpretation can be put on the brief terse A manuscript entry, which can mean that the battle was between Arthur and Modraut, or Modred, and that Modraut died or that both died. It certainly is not clear at all. Arthur and Modraut could have been allied fighting someone else, although the Welsh triads are definite over their enmity. One interesting entry in the year 573 records a battle of Armtored between two British leaders either princes or kings, named Eliver and Gwendolyn, and also that Merlin became insane. A strange entry indeed. The folklore legends made Merlin the advisor of Arthur. So with Arthur dead sometimes between 537 and 570, we now have the senility of a very old man. Merlin was probably uh, Myrig, the father of Arthur. For 150 years, the Welsh annals made no mention at all of the Angles or Saxons, nor of the Vandals or Mercians. The first entry of the English comes in 595 AD. And there are three pieces of information given. First, that Colum Kyle died. Second, that King Dunout died. And third, that Augustine converted the English to Christ. There follows a number of entries of the deaths of various bishops, and then there's an entry in 613 AD recording Bata Kylogion, and there fell Selin, son of Kiman. Self, son of Kinan, was killed at the Battle of Chester by Ethelfrith, the king of Northumbria, with the pagan Angles also slaughtered. 
1,250 monks. Selv or Selin is probably the Welsh for Solomon. The annals then go on to record the northern wars of Cadwallon, Edwin and Oswald. The entries become fuller, more detailed and more frequent. One actually records the Second Battle of Baden in 665 AD. This is important, as the British or the Welsh no longer held the areas of southern Britain and points to Baden being in South Wales and not in the Bath area. Bath, in fact, being known as Aqua Sully by the Romans and probably by Coloman, uh, sorry, as uh, <coughs> Kelimon by the British. Certainly not as Bath or Baden. Bath was never known as Bath or Baden by the Romans or the British. The entry of the Battle of Armtid in 57380 is interesting. For in the court pedigrees of Hawilvar, who died about 950 AD, these lists of ancient kings include Eliver of the Great Army or Great Retinue, a very possible reference or connection with Arthur's forces. But Eliver was king of northern Britain for about six years. Next we go on to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. I hope that you're enjoying this series of videos looking at the written evidence, the hard evidence behind the claims made about British and Welsh history. As you see on there, we have a live broadcast every Sunday, 8pm, which you're welcome to join in, interviewing writers, looking at the information. And we also have a whole group of us now visiting places from the tops of mountains to the bottoms of caves, studying some of the old stones, some of the enigmatic mysteries that have been left for us by our ancestors. Things like the ancient megalithic walls, which are disappearing all the time. And did you know that you could uh, read Egyptian hieroglyphs using the Welsh language? It's called Cymroglyphics. Give it a go. So, lots going on, and we need support. There's no funding for this. If you would consider being a Patreon subscriber, just £3 a month, that would be fantastic as well. Or go to the website, bet still, buy the books, get yourself informed, and subscribe. And remember to share these videos around and let people know that we do have a history. It's just been hidden.